Okay, I don't really have a prepared class. I was just yesterday, I was told to say, so I'm just going to speak about some Jagannath pastimes and some general stuff. So please forgive me if the class is not what you're used to. Um, okay, um, the Lord incarnates in every millennium. 
and during this time to deliver the residents of Kaliuga, the people of Kaliuga, he manifested in the form of Daru Brahma and Daru Brahma Chaturda Murti. Daru Brahma Chaturda Murti is Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra, and Sudarshan. They are called Sudar Chaturda Murti. Even though they appeared in wooden form, they exhibited many, many sweet pastimes. And the Lord incarnates to exhibit sweet pastimes, so to take back the people back, to claim the souls back, to attract the people back to him. Jagannath, even though he appeared in the form of deity form, he exhibited so many pastimes. And the glories of uh, Purushottam Shetra are described in various Puranas very elaborately. In different scriptures, uh, like the Skanda Purana, the Brahma Purana, and the Brahmanda Purana, uh, Jagannath Puri is described as Vaikuntha of the Mritya Loka. So this is the Mritya Loka where repeated birth and death take place. And this and Jagannath Puri, Jagannath Puri Jam, the Shetra is called uh, Mritya Vaikuntha. And it is good to be it is good for us to take birth as human beings so we can witness the sweet pastimes of the Lord. So when Krishna incarnated 5,000 years ago and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu incarnated five years ago, we were not around to see their pastimes, or at least we, we were, we don't know. So we probably were not. But so now when Jagannath is manifesting all these beautiful pastimes, we are here as human beings and we can witness such pastimes. So it is very nice for us to listen to Jagannath pastimes. He's very merciful and he reciprocates with the devotees and he accepts all his devotees, no matter how fallen we are, he accepts us. So that's why he's called Patita Pavana, the, uh, the savior of the fallen. We will discuss some philosophical points before we get to his Leela. Jagannath is very, very unique. He exhibits opposite qualities. Anito Ainiyan, Mahito Mahiyan. He's the greater than the greatest, he's smaller than the smallest. So, and in his temple, Jagannath Puri is the only temple in the world where, where uh, Jag Jagannath is worshipped by very high class Brahmins and also very, very lower class people, which is the Shud lesser than the Shudras, the Sabaras. On a caste hierarchy, the Sabaras are even lesser than the Shudras. But Jagannath doesn't make that distinction. He accepts service from them. And not only that, when he's sick, he only accepts service from them. So actually, he considers him their family. He values their services even more than he values, his, values the Brahmana services. Because we, just imagine, we as people, we interact with our co-workers, with our friends on a superficial level, or some, not the close friends, but some general friends on a superficial level. But when we're sick, who do we associate with? Our families take care of us. So when Jagannath falls sick, it's the Sabras that take care of Jagannath. So it's a very, very sweet exchange between these people. So 11 months of the year, the Brahmanas take care of the Jagannath. And one month of the year, when Jagannath falls sick, it's the Sabras who take care of him. The Brahmanas are glorified in all the scriptures. And we have that Sri Krishna himself glorifies Brahmanas, treats them very well. We have the story of Sudama Brahmana coming to visit Krishna and how he washed his feet, how he offered him his throne. You know, he highly respects the Brahmanas, but he's, he greatly values the services of the Daitapatis. They are very dear to him. And during the time of Navakalevar, every 12 years, Jagannath deities are renewed and new deities, new, new wooden deities are carved. And at that time, the Daitapatis behave as if there has been a death in their family. They shave their heads, they do some purificatory ceremonies, they do purificatory baths, they perform everything that somebody would do if there's a death in their family. That's how close they are to Jagannath. And then they worship, they, Jagannath temple is worship, was established. And in, every, every, uh, in the temple, early morning, Jagannath takes a bath, they give him a gumcha, they brush his teeth, they wash his, they take, clean his tongue and say they use camphor to work, brush his teeth. So this way you can see that Jagannath is treated in a very personal way and it proves that God is a person. It's not just a philosophy, not like the impersonals believe. He's a person and he interacts with his devotees. 
And some, even though there are strict rules in Jagannath Puri, sometimes they're very free from all restrictions. When Jagannath goes out on the street, you can hug Jagannath, you can kiss Jagannath, and the pandas lean on him. People, you can just, anybody can touch him. So he exhibits such opposite qualities, opposite things with, he's very, very merciful. And he comes out of the street once a year to give darshan to the common people. And he constantly gives his mercy, doesn't close his eyes. When Jagannath first manifested, King Indra asked him for three boons. And those three boons were, Lord Indra, uh, I mean, King Indra said, my Lord, I do not want any sons. And the Lord was very surprised. He said, most people ask for sons, especially king, kings want sons to rule their kingdom. Why are you asking, saying that you do not want a son? And he explained, he said, I don't want my son to be proud that this is my father's temple and show any ownership of the temple. So I do not want a son. And the Lord said, Tathastu, so be it. The second boon he asked the Lord was, he said, you should not stop eating. You should continuously be eating. When your hand, you wash your hand and before your hand, the wetness of your hand goes, you have to start eating again. The Lord liked this very much. And he said, Tathastu, so be it. And then the third boon he asked is, you should constantly give darshan to your deities, I mean, to your devotees. Uh, so do not go to sleep and just constantly give your mercy to everybody. And the Lord said, Tathastu. So the Jagannath Puri temples, the doors are shut only three hours. And even then, Jagannath doesn't sleep. It's close to the Mrithya Loka people, the people of this people, but the people from the heavenly kingdoms, the demigods come to visit him during those three hours, they say. So the Swargaloka people come at that time. The Swargaloka Vasis come, it's close to us, but it's open to them. And Vibhishan, Hanuman, all these great personalities are constantly visiting the Jagannath uh, temple, they say, and they leave out prasad for them and the next morning it's gone. So that is a thing that people witness there. They leave out some things, prasadam uh, for these people and all these uh, Swargaloka people come they take that and they leave. So Jagannath actually doesn't sleep at all. He continuously is giving darshan to somebody. In this way, Jagannath, you know, never closes his eyes. He has his eyelids always open. And um, all forms of the Lord have something in their hands. Like Lord Ram has his bow, his Danur bow. Krishna has his flute. But Jagannath has his arms open, like as if offering a hug to anybody who wants you know, he has his arms open to hug his devotees. So, um, and the Puranas describe various dams and they describe, and each dam in the description, if you will notice, they say that dam is the best. And sometimes you may wonder, they say, when they talk about Mayapur, they say Mayapur is the best. When they talk about Vrindavan, they say Vrindavan is the best. When they talk about Jagannath Puri, they say Jagannath Puri is the best. So it might be a little confusing. Why are they saying everything is the best? If some, everything is the best, then where's the difference? You know, it's a little confusing to people. But they say usually these authors who write these things are in such ecstasy when they're thinking of that particular dham that at that moment they feel that that dham is the best. So it's like Prabhupada explains, it's like when you eat a laddu from any which side you bite it, it is still sweet. So at that particular moment when they're writing it, they honestly believe that that is the best. But Jagannath Puri Dham, they say, is indeed the best because there's one specific quality. Like each, each Dham has its own mood. Like Dwaraka Dham is, is Aishwarya Dham. The Lord is worshipped in awe and reverence. Vrindavan Dham is Madhurya Dham. The Lord is worshipped in sweetness where there's no formality. And then in Mayapur Dham is Audarya Dham where the Lord is very magnanimous. You know, he gives mercy freely to everybody. But in, but in, in Puri Dham, all the Dhams are manifested. They say that Jagannath Temple is Dwaraka Dham and it's Aishwarya Bhag in that place. And the Gundija Temple is Vrindavan Dham and it is Madhurya. The Rasa is Madhurya in that, that place. And then the Siddha Bakula, the Gambira, and the Tota Gopina temple, they are considered the Udarya Dham, or they are considered Mayapur Dham, Navadvip Dham. So this way, all Dhams are represented in Jagannath Puri. 
And they say that Shastra says, if you do perform pilgrimage all over the country in India, you have to finally take darshan of Jagannath in Jagannath Puri. And the Lord in the Puri is very special. And what is his specialty? In every dham, the Lord manifests in a particular mood or rasa. So, and usually that mood is also, like for example, he's worshipped as, as Bhagavan in every place. He's the Lord in every place. But in Jagannath Puri, he's worshipped in two forms. He manifested in two forms. And one is as Jagannath and another as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he's in the mood of a devotee. He's in the mood of Bhagavan, but he's also in the mood of a devotee. So this way, you know, he has both, both uh, um, forms are manifested. And they're all, mind you, the other people, they're not incarnations of Krishna. They're Krishna himself. Jagannath is Krishna himself. He's another form of Krishna. And so is Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is Swayam Bhagavan Krishna himself, but in the mood of, mood of Radharani. This way, Bhagavan manifests two moods in Jagannath Puri. As Bhagav the mood of Bhagavan and the mood of Bhakta as a devotee. So, and when uh, the Jagannath form manifested, when uh, Rohini Mata was telling the pastimes of uh, Krishna in his childhood, and Jagannath, he withdrew his limbs inside in ecstasy. And so Jagannath is the form of Krishna in separation from Radharani. So he's in the mood of separation from Vrindavan and he's in ecstasy. That's why you have those big eyes, you have the withdrawn limbs. And then, and um, um, Goranga Mahaprabhu is, uh, is in the mood of Radharani, Krishna in the mood of Radharani. So both of, both of those manifestations are Krishna himself. They're not incarnations. They are Swayam Bhagavan Krishna. So there's two moods manifest. The, you know, the Lord is enjoying two moods, that of Bhagavan and that of Bhakta. During the Ratha Yatra pastimes, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami describes Ratha Yatra. One Jagann Jagannath in, in the mood of Bhagavan is sitting on the cart, and Bhagavan in the mood of a Bhakta is dancing on the streets. So simultaneously, the Lord is enjoying two moods. So that is the beauty and the speciality of. Uh, of, of uh, I mean, I mean, Puri, Jagannath Puri. So, and everything that happens in Jagannath Puri is on the instructions of the Lord himself or the Acharyas. And many customs are very traditional. They don't, the temple is so traditional, they don't deviate. They have the exact things that they have to do. The certain devotee families do the exact same services for generations. Those who cook do only cooking service. Those who do cleaning do only cleaning service. Those who do tulsi malas do only tulsi malas. Those who do the transporting of the food, they do only that, the prasadam. So every family and every uh, ser servant in that facility has been doing it for generations. So they are really in that mood of that service. And Jagannath sometimes will break all rules and regulations when it comes to devotees. But then in some ways, the Jagannath temple is very strict and they will not break any rules. So it's a, it's a contradiction. Um, and then we have some great pastimes. Let's come to the pastimes too. And there's, I, would, I will talk about three different kinds of pastimes. One is the pastime. One thing, the Jagannath is Patita Pavana. And he's also, he is also Bhakta Vatsala. He's, very, he's a lover of his devotees and he's very, very merciful. But the one thing that Jagannath cannot tolerate is pride. He cannot tolerate pride. And he immediately, even if some devotees feel prideful, he immediately smashes their pride. So I will talk about some brief pastimes regarding these three different um, categories. There was one, um, first I will talk about his Bhakta Vatsala, you know, his, his being um, merciful to the devotees and, you know, Patita Pavana. So there was a group of devotees that came from Maharashtra and there was this one woman who loved Jagannath so much, she decided to stay back and just serve the deities of Jagannath and she did not go back to Maharashtra. She fell in love with Jagannath. And at that time, she started cooking in the morning. She thought she thought she was in the mood of Jagannath as a mother. She thought Jagannath is my son. I have to feed him khichdi. He's hungry early in the morning. So every morning she would get up and make khichdi. And she would also call some saints and sadhus to her house to feed that khichdi afterwards. But one time when South Indian Swami, Brahmana Swami came, and he saw that she was not taking a bath. She was immediately going and cooking. And so she said, you're cooking for Jagannath. You're supposed to take a purificatory bath. You're supposed to clean your kitchen before you 
even start cooking. And she was a simple lady. So she said, okay, from tomorrow I will do that, you know. And then Jagannath came, used to come personally to eat her kitchen. So Jagannath came in the morning and this mother was taking a bath in the kitchen. So he went back to the temple. He came back a second time. At that time, she was cleaning her kitchen. And the third time, the Swami was giving instructions of how to clean the vessels. And Jagannath got really frustrated. Why is this man giving all these instructions to my mother and bothering my mother? Let her just keep eating. And then finally, when he came, the kitchen was done. He started eating. Just when he had started eating, the bell in the temple rang and he had to run back to the temple. So he immediately got on the altar and he sat there. And when the pujaris opened the door, they could see some kitchen on his mouth. And of course, these are great exalted devotees. They were thinking how, and Jayanath explained that the, the sadhu is making this woman go late and that's why I can't get my kitchen in time. So finally, the pandas approached that sadhu and said, she's a very exalted devotee. Jagannath wants to eat her kitchen and you're spoiling her service. So please don't give any instructions. She doesn't need it. And so this way, Jagannath, you know, now even to this day, the first offering that is done to Jagannath is kitchen prasad because she thought my son is hungry and in the mood of that, uh, that devotee. And she's called uh, uh, Karoma Bhai, Karoma Bhai, because every time the Lord came, he said, Jaldi Karoma, Jaldi Karoma in Hindi, like do it fast, do it fast, you know, do it quickly. So she got called as Karoma Bhai. And so, and now every morning, the first offering that is done is Kichdi Prasad for, I mean, Kichdi Boga for the Lordships, you know. So that tradition started with her. Then there was another woman called Lundi Mata. You know, she's a bald-headed woman. And she also had this mood that Jagannath is her son and she's a mother. And she thinks Jagannath eats so many chapan, so much chapan work, 56 items daily with ghee, sugar, heavy. He needs something, his stomach will get spoiled. You know, he'll get stomach upsets. So I need to treat him. So she brought, she would bring these bitter neem leaves into a paste as a medicine for Jagannath's stomach to settle down. And so every day she would do this. And one day she entered the Jagannath Puri temple with a part of her little uh, neem paste and the security would not let her in. They said, why are you coming in? What is in that part? And she said, this is for my son, you know, so that he doesn't get a stomach upset. And they thought maybe his, the, her son is working in the security inside the temple. So they said, okay, if that is the case, then um, who is your son? She said, don't you know, he's the person with big eyes sitting on that altar. And then they thought, oh, she's a crazy woman. And they said, we don't have time for this. And they just chased her out of the temple. That night, Jagannath, in reciprocation to his devotee, really had a stomachache. Of course, the Lord doesn't fall sick, but he reciprocates with the sentiment of his devotees. So he came in a dream and said, where was the neem paste? Why didn't you get me the neem paste? I really have a stomachache now. And I have a stomach upset. And then she woke up. And then the Lord also went in the king's dreams and said, why is your security stopping my mother from giving me the medicine I need? If you don't give me, if you don't let her in, I'm not going to taste your chapanbog from now on. And of course the king was frightened and he made all arrangements and he started looking where is this woman and he found her in a little cottage and he said, you're so fortunate. Jagannath thinks of you as your, uh, thinks of you as his mother. And so that was another pastime. And since then, Jagannath is offered bitter items also and the neem, neem is one of the things that uh, Jagannath is offered on the altar so that pastime came because of that and then there is a there's a second uh, category of uh, pastimes I mean there's many but I'm just going to pick a couple in each category and that is Garba Banjana pastimes the Lord cannot uh, tolerate anybody feeling very proudful prideful you know but he cannot tolerate pride in a devotee so one time there was a south indian uh, rich merchant called jagat Seth, and he came with one lakh rupees and in those days one lakh rupees was like a crore now or maybe more even because everything was so cheap they said ghee was like four paisa a liter and two paisa for milk and so how can you spend a lakh of rupees in those days they didn't know. They said, okay, we'll keep it. And over a period of time, we'll offer things. So, and he said, no, it has to all be done in one day. So they were racking their brains and they're thinking, what can we do? So they went to Jagannath. Of course, devotees, when they're in bad shape, they just approached the Lord and they said, what should we do? And the Lord came in their dream and said, you should tell him that he should offer 
palm leaves, beetle leaves. And he said, beetle leaves, they're even cheaper than the other stuff. So how can I offer? But the Lord put one condition, that you have to use it with gaja moti powder, not with lime that the people eat the palm, but with pearl powder. And that gaja moti, if it kill a thousand elephants, maybe one elephant might have that in, the, in their forehead, they have a pearl. And the Lord wanted the powder of that to be in the palm. So of course the man knew he was defeated. And so he quietly put his turban down. He left the money in front of Jagannath and he quietly left. So Jagannath had defeated and crushed his pride. And he realized that I cannot play all these tricks with Jagannath and put all these conditions. I'm just supposed to serve and just give the Lord and let the Lord decide what he wants to do and not put conditions in the service. So that was a lesson that he learned and he left. And then there's a second pastime of how Sudarshan became a pillar. Now Sudarshan is a great devotee of the Lord. He's always on the Lord's hands, but every other place he's on the Lord's right hand. But in Jagannath Puri, he's on the left side of the Lord in the form of a pillar. And there's a story attached to that, a very interesting story. Jagannath was, uh, Sudarshan was feeling a little proud, you know, that, oh, I'm always there at the service of the Lord. So he was getting some feelings of pride. And the Lord recognized this and he said, I have, a, uh, I have a, a servant, a devotee better than you. And he said, who? He said, there is Hanuman who's making, doing tapasya in the south, southern seas you know, on an island. So go call him. So Sudarshan was, of course, feeling a little ticked off that somebody is greater than him. So, but he went. But Sudarshan travels on the speed of mind. So he went and got Hanuman. But he did not want Hanuman to enter the temple. So all the four gates of the temple, Sudarshan was blocking and blocking the way of Hanuman getting in. And Hanuman, of course, did not know what to do. So he just prayed to the Lord. And the Lord manifested four arms on, on Hanuman. And he, of course, Hanuman has tremendous strength. Like we all know, he captured all the four like toys in his hands and he had four forms of Sudarshan in his hand and he entered the temple. And then of course, Sudarshan realized his mistake. I mean, some of this is Leela because they, it's like Indra having pride and Krishna smashing Indra's pride during Kartik. You know, all these devotees go through some little period. Sometimes it is for lessons for us. So the Lord acts through the devotees and performs that Leela. Sometimes those, devotees might still actually have a momentary moment of a lapse when they think that they can do and then they realize their mistake. Of course, Sudarshan was very remorseful, started crying and saying, please, you know, forgive me, I've made such a big offense. And at that time, the Lord said, no, don't worry about it. I will also give you a blessing. And then as Neela Chakra is on the top of the, of the temple, and he said, whoever sees the Neela Chakra in the temple gets the same benefit as if they came inside the temple and I had my personal darshan. So taking darshan of the chakra and taking darshan of the deities gets the same benefit. And the Lord gave that blessing to Sudarshan and then he was satisfied. But now he stands there as a form for pillar by the Lord on his left side. So that's how Sudarshan came to be on the left side and take the form of a pillar. So that those two are pastimes that the Lord performed to get the pride of the pride of the devotees down, you know, because that's the one thing he cannot tolerate, you know, and he crushes their pride and makes them humble. And of course, they realize their mistake and they're remorseful. And of course, they're great devotees. So they, 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 are, they take pardon of the Lord and they make, correct their mistakes. So they're, and then I want to speak about two more pastimes. And one of them is they're people, they're ordinary people, very simple hearted people but they took shelter of the Lord and how the Lord reciprocated with them. One of them is Dasar Bauri. He's in, Oris, in Orissa, he's famous. And he was a very simple hearted, lower class person. He was not allowed inside the temple, but one day he wanted to offer mangoes to um, Jagannath. So he went to the temple and um, when he went there, of course, they wouldn't let him in. But he, they said, give, give us the mangoes, we'll take it in and offer to. No, he said, no, I want to offer it myself. So he started looking at the chakra and because of his great devotion, the mangoes would fly out of his hand and go up to the chakra and would disappear. So they thought this man is doing magic like some magician, what is he doing? And they were very upset with him, but he kept on doing it and all the mangoes in his basket would fly up and disappear. And so then they thought, maybe he's just doing some kind of a magic trick 
But when they went inside and opened the curtains of Jagannath, all the mango seeds and the skins and everything were there around Jagannath. So they realized what a great devotee he is. And then he, he was famous as the devotee who could offer things from Jagannath from outside and Jagannath could still accept from his hands the thing. And one time his, he had just come back from Jagannath Puri. So constantly was thinking about the eyes of the Lord and his on the form of the Lord. And he was so engrossed in his, in his thoughts of the Lord that he couldn't think of anything else. And his wife, when he came, offered him on a, on a red clay plate, you know, the, the clay plate that looks like red clay. And she put some rice and she put some spinach in the middle. And to him, it looked like Jagannath's eyes, you know, the red in the outside, the white and the black spot. So he said, how can I eat my Lord? I'm not going to eat it. And also when he started, he became so ecstatic, he started dancing. And she thought my husband has gone crazy. So she called the village elders and said, I don't know what is wrong with this man. He doesn't eat, he starts dancing. And so, and then they told him, why aren't you eating? And he said, how can I eat? And then they realized that he was always seeing the Lord everywhere. So in that three, the red, white, and black, he was just seeing the eyes of the Lord. So then the village elders said, serve him in separate plates, in a different plate, serve the rice separate from the spinach. And she did that, and then he was finally able to eat. So that was another great pastime that um, that's about it did. And he became famous all over Orissa as a wonderful devotee of the Lord. And then there is another one called Bandhu Mahanti. He, had a, he was a very poor person and he lived in Jaipur with his wife and two children. One time there was drought and there was famine everywhere. And he was a Brahmin. He was going and begging everywhere. But of course he couldn't get, people can, could not feed themselves. So nobody could get arms. So the family was starving. The children were crying. Then his wife said, maybe we should move and go to another place. Do you have any relatives whose houses we can go? We can leave this town and go somewhere else. So he said, no, I don't have any relatives, but I have one very dear friend. And that friend, you know, will fulfill everybody's wishes. So she said, okay, let's go to that friend then. Let us go. And so he was very happy that his wife agreed. And they each carried a child and they started walking. It took them four days to reach Jagannath Puri. But of course, the temple's door was closed and he was not let inside the temple. It was very crowded and you know, since he's wearing tattered clothes and he's really a poor person, and you know, he was really neglected. And then finally, he, he was, um, he took darshan of a deity on the east gate where people are not allowed, they can take darshan of a deity outside. And he looked at that. And then he came to the south gate and there they called a Pajnala, they say that the starch of the rice that's offered to flows to that. And a lot of devotees take it as prasad, the cows drink it as prasad. So they went there and he had an earthen broken pot. He took the starch and they ate, drank that and they you know, somehow satisfied their hunger. And that night they went to sleep. And then when they woke up in the morning, the wife said, why don't we go to your friend's house? Why are we still here? So he said, well, the friend, the, my friend has many guests now. He cannot entertain us so we, can, we have to stay here. So that night they slept there. But Jagannath couldn't sleep because he knew how much his devotee loved him and how much he trusted him and how much faith he had in him because he said my friend will take care of me no matter what and because of that tremendous faith the lord just couldn't you know couldn't rest he just he got up and all the pandas had locked the temple and they had left for the day he went into the storage he got his golden plate he got all the wonderful sweets and everything that was made for jagannath and he brought the plate outside and he came as took the form of a brahmin and he said, um, 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 he called out the name of the devotee, Bandhu Mahanti, Bandhu Mahanti, he said, but he said, who, uh, nobody knows me in this town, maybe it's somebody else by that name, so he just ignored it. But after a while, he kept on hearing it, please come and take this prasad, this is for your family. So then, of course, he took the prasad and he said, please eat this, and tomorrow I will make all arrangements for you, don't worry. And he just went back into the temple. So of course, Bandhu Mahanti and his family happily honored all the prasad. And then he washed the plate. And when he went to return the plate, the Brahmin had gone and the door was locked. He couldn't get in. So he said, okay, tomorrow morning, I'll have to give the plate. So he just wrapped it in a piece of cloth and they all went to bed. And the next morning when the pandas opened the door, the 
Lord's golden plate was missing. So everybody was in a hue and cry. They did not know what was happening. Everybody was trying to pick this and that and the other thing. And they called the police and they said, it has to be an inside job because nobody else has the keys. And they questioned all the pandas, but they were all, then somebody spotted a golden plate by this person who was sleeping by the door. And they pulled him in and they beat him heavily. And they said, you stole the plate. And he said, no, I did not. A Brahmin came in the night and gave me this. And I came to return the plate, but the door was locked. So I couldn't get in, but nobody believed him. But of course, Bandhu Mohanty in his total surrender said, Lord, you're the Lord of the universe. You know what to do. You know, it wasn't me, but you take care of everybody. So, you know, whatever you do, my fate is in your hands and I'm just leaving my life up to you. Whatever you decide is okay with me. So he was very surrendered. So that the Lord appeared in the king's dream and said, why are you beating my friend? If you do such offense, I will take away everything from you. So make sure, go and find this person, take pardon of him, wash his feet and honor him and take care of him. So when then the king, of course, was, you know, the kings of Orissa were also great devotees at that time. So all these people, the king, you know, the people, they reciprocate. So anyway, the king came and found out and then it was settled, you know, and then he he put a turban on this man's head. He honored him. He did. He worshipped his feet as a Brahmin and he took the water and then he gave him a nice house right by Jagannath's temple. And for the rest of his life, he was taken care of and he was doing intimate, beautiful service for Jagannath. And so that was resolved there. There was also another great king who himself was you know, he was playing dice one day. And the tradition is whenever the, they open the curtain, if something falls from Jagannath, it's considered auspicious and was gifted to the king. So the people from the temple came to gift the king. At the time, the king was with his ministers and some people and he was playing dice with his right hand. So absent-mindedly, he accepted it with his left hand. But later on, when the game was over, he was so mortified. He said, oh my God, what did I do? I took Jagannath Prasad with my left hand. And he was feeling so bad about it. He stopped eating. He stopped sleeping. He was not attending to his kingly duties. So the ministers were worried and they said, what is wrong? What happened? And he said, I cannot sleep. I have a ghost that comes in the night. So they did all these pujas. But of course, the ghost, there was no ghost. But that anyway, the king said there was a ghost. So then one day the minister said, OK, then I'll sleep in your room tonight. And then when I see the ghost, I will take care of the ghost. So the minister slept on the king's bed. And that night, a hand came in the window. And the minister went and chopped the hand. And so, and so he said, okay, now the ghost is taken care of. But next day morning, when he came to the king's court, the king was missing his left hand. And then he was thinking, oh my God, what did I do? I chopped the king's hand. But the king said, I made a very great offense against Jagannath, so I'm not you know, I should not keep that hand. So that's why I cut it off. But then since then, he could not worship Jagannath at the temple because people without limbs are not, you know, people have to be whole when they worship the Lord. So the king was not, could not anymore directly serve Jagannath. But the minister was very sad. But in the Vallabha gardens, you know, Jagannath Vallabha, he went and buried the hand like a samadhi of the hand. And then a very sweet bush came that smelled really, really very fragrant the leaves were so fragrant when the leaves came up that uh, um jagannath you know uh, so he wanted to offer those leaves but he said what can i do he did not but he told the gardener don't let anybody touch this bush and he gave strict orders to the gardener but next every time when he came he saw the missing leaves and he thought what is this gardener doing he's taking the leaves off and the gardener said no i honestly didn't take the leaves it's not my work but the king couldn't believe it. So he said, if this goes happens tomorrow, you're going to be killed. I'm going to, you know, hang you. So then, but the gardener was praying to Jagannath, you know, it wasn't me. And that night Jagannath came in the king's dream and said, it wasn't your gardener, but because of your intense love for me, I came to take the, that bush grew out of where your hand was buried. And that is, that is your love for me. And that's why I want those leaves. And I personally came to steal them. It was me. And since then, Dayanaka leaves, they call Diana leaves, are offered to the deities. And once a year, there's a pastime as Krishna Balaram, the deities come out as in the form of Krishna Balaram. And there's a stealing pastime that goes on 
where they go and steal the leaves. You know, that's the tradition that followed even to this day. So all these traditions that came into Jagannath Puri were made because of some pastime that happened, something happened, and on the Lord's instructions themselves, or some great devotee came and gave those instructions, you know, some acharya. So all those traditions in uh, Jagannath Puri are because of um, what, what something that happened in the past, you know. Um, and during Kartik, the, the, the last five days of Bhishma Panchaka, Jagannath is dressed in special costumes, you know, five days, he has different five veshas, they call it, you know, five different costumes, and he's dressed as Lakshmi Narsimha, he's dressed as Lakshmi Narayan, so different uh, forms of the Lord, so five days, he has five veshas that are, are displayed, so that is a tradition in, during Kartik, and because uh, um, we just had Prabhupada's appear, disappearance day we observed just a few days ago. I want to speak very briefly about Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada brought Jagannath all over the world pastimes. And before, um, one um, lecture I'd heard from Bhakti Purushottam Maharaj, he says, in Jagannath Puri, things are so traditional. They don't even like Western vegetables. Forget about Western devotees and Western people being let in the temple. They do not offer Jagannath potatoes, tomatoes, cauliflower, um, cabbage. Those vegetables are not offered to Jagannath. Only the local vegetables are offered to Jagannath. So, and he said, now Jagannath eats pasta, pizza, every kind of prasad everywhere all over the world, you know, in different locations, he eats different prasad. So the Lord, you know, Prabhupada brought Jagannath to every devotee of the world. And he's now truly the Lord of the universe. You know, he's all over the world. And Prabhupada's greatness is in 12 short years, he spread Krishna consciousness and no ordinary person could do that. So he's an Acharya of Acharyas. He's, he's a foremost Acharya and his books are the law books for the next 10,000 years. So there is no, um, not only did he have a wealth of Krishna Prem, he's like, he, he, he has deep, deep love for Krishna but he had an overflowing of compassion on the fallen souls. So that's why he was able to deliver everybody. And within those 12 years, not only did he spread, spread the Krishna conscious movement, build temple communities, farm communities and everything, but he also transformed the people and he gave pure love of Krishna to a lot of his devotees and disciples around the world. He was not only able to bring them to Krishna consciousness. He was even able to give them pure love of Krishna. And single-handedly, he stopped the flow of Maya, or at least checked the flow of Maya and Kali Yuga for a long time. So Kali Yuga is progressing. So they say in the next 10,000 years, it's upstream. You know, Even though everything goes downstream in Kali Yuga, for the next short period of time, it's going upstream. And souls can be recovered and go back to Godhead. So we are lucky that we're born in this 10,000 year period when Mahaprabhu has made an advent 500 years ago and Prabhupada, the, um, the Mahapati Sena, you know, the commander in chief of uh, uh, Lord Chaitanya's army made his advent and saved us all and brought us to Krishna consciousness. So we have to be so grateful to Prabhupada and we really have to, you know, feel our, uh, how much we owe to Prabhupada because he was able to really, you know, really just, it's not like there are many sadhus, there are many pious people, but they were not able to do what Prabhupada did. So Prabhupada is an ambassador from the spiritual world. He's a special personality who advented just to spread the Krishna consciousness. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it mentions that there is a Sena Bhakti, Bhakti Bhakta will come in the future, who will spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. And when Prabhupada, took his birth and his chart was read, the astrologist said, this child is very special. When he's 70 years old, he'll cross the seas. He will go to, you know, abroad and he'll spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. And he'll build 108 temples in his lifetime. And that prediction came true. That, that really happened. And that was predicted right at the time when he was born. So, Prabhupada is no ordinary person. He's a very, very special Acharya. And he has written so many things. So it is for us to read his books, to 
have that knowledge and to act on it. And also in our little way, try to help Prabhupada's mission. So in whatever little way we can help, you know, whether it's cooking services, whether it's a little book distribution here, whether it's Prabhupada has already laid the foundation. We just need to do our little bit and then we can really also, and it is for our benefit, you know, whenever we do something for the Lord or for the spiritual master, it is not for their benefit. They don't need anything from us. It is for our benefit that we do. So when we do something, even however small, sincerely, it is it helps us in our spiritual journey. So um, I, you know, I had a personal loss. You know, I, I don't want to talk too much about myself, but I would request all the deities, uh, devotees to pray for my my cousin, very close cousin who just left his body during Karthik. And he has his uh, upcoming on the 27th, his 12th and 13th day ceremonies will be observed. So I would ask if you can pray for this soul's onward journey back to Godhead. And I really, I was told yesterday, can you do, I didn't have any preparation. I didn't have anything. And I thought, what am I going to say? But then I thought, let me do this as a service. And for my, you know, to my little bit, in a prayerful mood for my cousin's, uh, you know, journey back to onward journey for his soul. So if I've made any mistakes, please forgive me. So if anybody has any questions or comments or suggestions, please, I would like to hear from you guys. Hare Krishna. Where are you reading all these stories from of Jagannath? I'm not. Um, I had read them in past. I just wrote from my notes. Those are my personal notes. And... But there are there are some stories of Rod Jagannath books, right? I mean, I think Jiva Yeah, I do have right? books of Bhakti Pusham, but I didn't refer to the book. These were stories I'd heard in the past. And uh, some of them I hear. There's Hare Krishna TV channel that goes all day. So sometimes. Sometimes when I can't sleep in the night, I'll just turn them on and there's Vedic stories and they will have stories of Krishna. So a couple of the stories came from there or some things that I've read in the past. You know, so it's like, it's from all over the place. But um, I've also heard some lectures, you know. Um, in a one lecture uh, of, of my Guru Maharaj, he says um, that in San Francisco when Prabhupada was... Uh, addressing the devotees in 1973 or it was still kind of early on and he said some of the devotees some of the disciples were had only joined for a year some two years but they were still in their infancy they were still in the start of their sadhana you know but Prabhupada was so humbled he never took credit for any of his work he just said Prabhupada said uh, um, I'm just a you know messenger of my Guru Maharaj you know I'm just a messenger i'm only giving the message i have no credit in this you know and then he he out of, with tears in his eyes he said you you are helping me spread my guru maharaj's message i see you as a representative of my guru maharaj and my guru maharaj is saying we were only one year two years in the movement many of us did not were, were not even following the regulative principles properly or we didn't even know a lot of the philosophy and this was Prabhupada's mood you know he was so humble that he gave credit to everybody else and never took credit for himself. So that is his greatness and his, uh, his humility. And, you know, and a lot of Prabhupada disciples have many stories to tell about Prabhupada where he's so humble, where he's, you know, not at all, you know, he just, he treats him, he doesn't give, doesn't take any credit. He just sees him as a, he just sees himself as a servant of Krishna and a servant of his Guru Maharaj, just bringing up like a messenger, like a postman delivering a letter. And that's the example he gave in many places. You're not supposed to add anything. You're not supposed to take out anything. You're supposed to give it the way you received it, you know, as is. And that was his greatness. But of course, we all know that it was his personal love for Krishna, his, the power of his personality, that all this happened, you know, that, so. Um. Thank you. Uh, Hare Krishna Mataji. Yes, Prabhu. 
it was nice class mata ji i mean you covered lot of past times of jagannath and jagannath past times are always sweet so i have one question mata ji like a uh, beginning of the class you said uh, uh, all the dhams are important and uh, when the author was describing about that dham he always said that dham is great so uh, in nectar of instruction it also says that mathura is the uh, top most dham and everyone try to reside in mathura so by seeing that like why that mathura is you know top dham okay this is um, this is something i heard too this is said like krishna krishna is the same even among krishna's past times there's a difference in dwaraka there are aishwarya past times he's in awe and glory even in mathura he has um, it's slightly you know they say that uh, krishna is purna he's complete wherever he is is complete it's is not that he's incomplete but in in dwaraka is complete but in mathura he's more complete and in vrindavan he's the most complete so he's complete everywhere it's not that he's incomplete somewhere and he's complete somewhere else but they say he's purna purna bhagwan in dwarka he's purna tara bhagwan in mathura and purnottama bhagwan in vrindavan that's what i had heard in one lecture that he's most complete in vrindavan because during the past times with the mother yashoda with nand maharaj with the gopis you know he forgets he is god like when he is afraid of mother yashoda he is not pretending to be afraid he is actually afraid and when the when the gwal is cowherd boyfriend say we are not going to play with you if you go in the middle of a game we are not going to play with you next time he is really worried that okay they are not going to play with me so he'll say okay okay i won't go i will play with you and he's not just pretending he's honestly and really he's feeling that emotion in that moment so his most complete in vrindavan they say so it's purna bhagwan in dwaraka purna tara bhagwan in mathura and purnottama bhagwan in vrindavan so that's the way it's described complete more complete and most complete so he's complete everywhere it's not that he's incomplete in one place and only is complete in another place so and these authors when they write about the dham mahat mahatme in that moment they are actually feeling such ecstasy that they feel this is the most so that's how it is described it's depending on the mood of the devotee they say and it, so all dams are special but i said the speciality of the jagannath puri dam is the lord is in two moods as bhagwan and as a bhakta also so as chaitanya mahaprabhu is experiencing he is in the mood of a devotee he is in the mood of radharani and on the altar he is in the mood of bhagwan so in every other place he just is in the mood of bhagwan he is always worshiped you know he's on the altar but in this place he is in both places simultaneously so that is the beauty of jagannath puri that it is so special in its uh, in its um, rasa that there are two moods simultaneously that of bhakta and bhagwan so he enjoys the mood of a devotee there and he enjoys as bhagwan there too so he enjoys in two ways so and like i said you know within jagannath puri they say the puri temple itself is dwaraka and the gundicha temple is vrindavan and the siddhabakula and totagopinath and gambira those areas are considered navadvip so with within the three within the dam itself there are three different moods and three different uh, rasas going on you know three different mellows so it's very special in that way and then look at haridas thakur he was not allowed in the temple so he would just see the chakra from far away but jagannath but lord jagannath himself in the form of lord chaitanya came with mahaprasad every day to visit haridas thakur and similarly um, sanatan goswami and uh, and um, rupa goswami never entered the temple voluntarily even though they were high class brahmins they were born in brahman families they felt themselves contaminated because they are associated with the nawab husain shah on a personal level for many years they were, were in the employment of the nawab so they felt that they were not worthy so they never entered the temple voluntarily even though nobody told them not to they didn't go inside the temple but the lord himself came to them so such is the power of you know the the lord loves his devotees so much there is so much reciprocation and especially jagannath is so merciful 
you know, he doesn't, you don't need high standards, like in art, maybe you don't need tapasya, you don't need great austerity. He's satisfied with just chanting, dancing, you know, just, you know, very simple things. So Kali Yuga Vasis are so bad. That's why they said Lord has to be more merciful in Kali Yuga than any other Yuga. Because the other Yuga, at least the people had some standards. We are so fallen that the Lord gives up all difficult tasks and all he says is chant, eat prasad, dance, and go back to God. And even then we find it difficult to do that. Those instructions are even hard for us. Even those simple instructions are hard for us. So they, they said the Lord makes it very, very, very easy. Just eat Krishna Prasad, just chant the holy name. And the Lord incarnates in Kali Yuga in the name of the, in the form of the holy name, in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. And also, you know, so the Lord does not incarnate as a person. I mean, yes, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and started the Yuga Dharma. But going onwards until Kali Yuga, the end of Kali Yuga, those are what gives us the where the Lord is represented, the Holy Name and Srimad Bhagavatam. So reading the scriptures and, you know, if we perform those duties, I think we can, we can try at least, you know, to our capacity. So. Hare Krishna Mataji, thank you for the very inspiring class and the sweet Jagannath Leela. I feel like I visited Jagannath Puri tonight. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna Mataji. Yes, Prabhu. Very, very, very nice lecture. And thank you so much for sharing those lectures. Just one humble request. If possible, uh, please give more lecture and share those past times. Thank you. I'll try, Prabhu, but I'm not very computer savvy. So other, I'm at Rajanandini's house and Madhav Kanta's house. They set up the computer for me. I mean, right now I don't even have a working computer, but I'm going to get one soon, but I don't even know how to set it up and all this other stuff. So somebody else has to do it for me. So that is a little bit of a problem, but I will definitely try, you know, this is a small service I can do. I, and definitely I want to make a disclaimer. Nobody should get the impression that I'm, you know, a good devotee. I'm not, I'm very fallen. I'm very low on the totem pole. But Krishna in his infinite mercy yesterday, Ganpati going the call. And I was like, I'm not even sleeping at night. So I was thinking, how can I give a class? But then Ganpati going the said, no, you can speak about anything. You don't have to speak about Bhagavad Gita, anything you want to speak. And I thought in during Snani Yatra, they told me, give me a 20 minute class. And they had told me to give a 20 minute class. And then the class got canceled because our program changed during Snani Yatra. So I had that those few things that I was thinking of saying. So I just added something to it and that's why I was able to. But thank you very much, you know. I just need all your blessings and I certainly will try because th this is a time for me that I'm in a crisis mode. So it's time to think and rethink my, rethink my choices, rethink my, what I should do to go on this path of devotion. And a lot of devotees are helping me. They're very kind, you know, and, so, and along the way, and because of their suggestion and their kindness, I think I'm, hopefully I will, you know, get into a better place and I will also probably learn more from other devotees. You know, we have some nice exalted devotees who have joined our temple, so I hope to learn from them. So, but thank you very much, you know, just keep me in all your prayers and also please pray for the departed soul of my cousin. So, Devi Priya Mataji? Yes, Prabhu. Very nice class, Mataji. Thank you so much. Yes, Prabhu, I don't know what else to do. I guess we have to wait for Aarti, right? There's one more minute. Does it start at five? Yes. Yes, Mataji. Jagannath 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 
Sri <laughs> Param Sikaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vindiki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopagopinath Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Gir Govadhan Ki Jai Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Mayapur Dham Ki Jai Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai Ganga Mahi Ki Jai Jamuna Mahi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Shrimati Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai Lord Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Devi Ki Jai, Shri Shri Gornitai Ki Jai, Shri Shri Gornitai Ki Jai, Shri Shalagram Shilas Ki Jai, Shri Giriraj Maharaj Ki Jai, Samaveta Bhaktavinda Ki Jai, Gaur Premanandi, All glories to the assembled devotees, All glories to the assembled devotees, All glories to the assembled devotees, all glories, all glories to Sri Sri Guru and Guranga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Namaste Narasimhaya. Namaste Narasimhaya. Sharanam 
Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us on our Sunday program today. And happy Gopashtami! Haribo! Haribo! We have two sponsors for our program today. Sudhir Priya Mataji is sponsoring for her cousin, Sri Gopi Krishna Shenoy, who recently passed away. So she's sponsoring for his spiritual benefit on his journey home. Haribo! 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 Omiyo Prabhu, who is sponsoring for the welding of his father, Sri Arundas. Haribo. 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 So if any of you are inspired to sponsor, you can sponsor for our regular Sunday programs for only $125. And for that, you can contact His Grace Pyari Mohan Prabhuji or Her Grace Shiva Mataji at the temple phone number displayed on your screen. November 25th, coming Wednesday, is Ekadashi. Haribo. Haribo. It is recommended for those of us who can to fast from grains and beans on Ekadashi and also engaging more spiritual activities like reading more of Srila Prabhupada's books, chanting more rounds of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Fast break is the day after on November 26th, that's on Thursday, which also is Thanksgiving Day. So uh, you can observe your Dwadashi fast break on that very day. And we're also going to have our special Likadashi Bhajan Kirtan program on November 25th, Wednesday, between 5.45 to 6.45. Haribo! Haribo! 
uh, Ganapati Govind Prabhu, do you want to talk about World Gita Day? Yeah. Thank you, Prabhuji. Yes, uh, sure. So, um, the World Gita Day is coming up. Uh, this is actually Gita Jayanti. This is the day when uh, Lord Krishna first spoke the Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna. This year, um, incidentally, it is coming on December 25th, which happens to be Christmas Day. So, we are observing this as World Gita Day. And uh, the Sankirtan team worldwide have embarked on a ambitious target of uh, at least distributing 2 million Bhagavad Gita's all around the world. North America has taken a target of distributing 100,000 Gita's throughout North America. And uh, to do our part, is of Connecticut has uh, taken a target of 1,008 Gita's. So we are Hare requesting Bo. everybody, we are requesting all devotees to help us in meeting this target. So you can either take boxes of Gita's from us Soft Gitas or Hard Gitas, we have a special pricing for Soft Gitas. The box would cost only $108. So in one box, we have 24 Gitas. And uh, the Hard Cover box would cost, there are 16 copies in one box, and one box would cost only $125. So you the, either you can take boxes of Gitas from us, or you can sponsor uh, the Gitas, and we can distribute on, on your behalf whatever way possible. We can also ship it out for, on your behalf if you want to want us to ship it out somewhere uh, within North America. We can do that. So you can reach out to me for that. Um, this is Ganpati Govindas. So yeah, that's it. Thank you, Prabhuji. Yeah, Gitas are available in many different languages. Um, mostly all the Indian um, vernacular languages, it is available. And we also have Spanish Gitas available. We have Russian, we have Arabic Gitas. So almost uh, all major languages, Gitas are available. So if you're looking for some specific language, you can also let us know about the language. Thank you, Prabhuji. Prabhuji, you're on mute. Is there Prabhu on mute? It's trying to connect, uh, looks like it's connected. What are we waiting on? Yes, yeah, so I think they probably disconnected. So this is our regular uh, online program. So you can see on, on the screen. Okay, am I audible now? Yeah, you can go ahead, Prabhu. Thank you, bro. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, so you can find the details on our temple website and, uh, you know, uh, you can join our programs uh, on Zoom. Uh, the Zoom details are displayed on your screen. The details are also available on the same website. And, uh, you know, please feel free to join. Uh, we have many uh, very exciting programs that are currently going on. And with that, we will now move over to uh, more kirtan, more chanting for our free sponsors, for our Sunday program sponsors. Hare Krishna. Madhu Vashini Mataji. Mataji, are you there? Kirti, Tirtha Pad Prabhu. Prabhu, yes. Uh, yeah, you you are chanting, right? No, no, not not today, Prabhu. Okay. Uh, it looks like Madhavapal Prabhu asked. Okay, uh, no problem, Prabhu. Uh, would you like to chant, or anyone would like to chant? We can chant, Prabhu. Yeah, go ahead, Prabhu. Yeah. Prabhu, Narasimha prayers, right? 
no sponsorship kirtan yeah okay. Kirt- kirtan prabhu go ahead okay kirtan prabhu no problem if if hari krishna prabhu yes Prabhu ji, who's gonna sing? Atirthapat. Prabhu, actually, Atirthapat. Prabhu, my husband called to for Madhubashni to sing only this week, not for next week. Okay. No, no one. In- I think he misunderstood. Yeah, that's uh, what I got a message. So. <laughs> Madhubkanta Prabhu, you can chant probably, right? Yeah, Madhu ji. Ah, uh, go ahead, Prabhu. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Namo. Yeah, sure. Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasaya, Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Niti Namine, Namaste Saraswati Deve, गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषाशून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशतारिणे श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैता गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्तरिंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 
राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे लिता गौरा हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल लिता गौरा हरि बोल लिता प्रभुपात की जय निताय गौर प्रेम नंदी हरि हरि बो थैंक यू सो मच प्रभु जी आवर स्पॉन्सर्स फॉर टुडे सुदेवी प्रिया माता जी की जय जय श्री गोपी कृष्ण प्रभु जी की जय ओमियो प्रभु की जय अरुण प्रभु जी की थैंक यू वेरी मच अगेन एवरीवन फॉर जॉइनिंग अस फॉर आवर संडे प्रोग्राम दिस इवनिंग एंड विद दैट वी विल बी टेकिंग दर्शन ऑफ द डीटीज वन मोर टाइम फॉर टुडे एंड वी विल बी क्लोजिंग आवर प्रोग्राम एंड वी होप टू सी यू अगेन इन आवर अपकमिंग प्रोग्राम्स वी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ प्रोग्राम्स गोइंग ऑन वी होप यू विल बी जॉइनिंग देम एज़ वेल सो वी विल टेक अ क्लोजर दर्शन बिफोर वी एंड आवर प्रोग्राम टुडे हरे कृष्णा we doing closer darshan prabhu okay i can do that ऋषि गौरिताय की जय श्री राज महाराज की जय ब्यूटीफुल गार्लैंड यशोदा माई दामोदर की नरसिंहदेव भगवान की जगन्नाथ बलराम सुभद्रा देवी की शालीग्राम शिलास की
Sri Kaunita Aiki Everybody Ki Jai 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 Prabhu Ki Jai Hare Krishna Hare Krishna thank you for such a nice program Gita Mala Mataji's birthday today we must sing a song for Mataji care <laughs> milestone anyway yeah. thank you so much uh, for your all of your blessings on this useless servant of krishna <laughs> thank you oh, we didn't sing it very we weren't very much in harmony <laughs> <laughs> sounds exactly like my life there it was perfect <laughs> Anji, don't forget, that's the reason why you want to go back. Exactly, right? Maltipriya, you said it. <laughs> Get out of all this disharmony, right? <laughs> Gita Mala Mataji keeps our Bhagavad Gita classes very vibrant. I hope she continues to keep them vibrant. <laughs> but not in my class. <laughs> Maltipriya is you... too ser serious. Huh? I can't make them too vibrant, right, Maltipriya? <laughs> Mata, you, for your classes, we, Mata, you doesn't need to make it vibrant. It's already vibrant. <laughs> Mata, Priya doesn't give anybody a chance to say anything. She just talks real fast for like over an hour. That's right, Prabhu. That's the goal. <laughs> One day, if I cannot, us... <laughs> if I cannot convince, I'll confuse. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like my husband says if you can't dazzle them with your brilliance baffle them with your BS <laughs> no, Ma Maltipriya one day gave a lecture on Lord Shiva I think she pretty much gave like every single pastime that ever existed of Lord Shiva <laughs> and she wanted to give some more <laughs> because I knew you guys won't give me a chance again <laughs> but we learned a lot about Lord Shiva Maltipriya. Okay. Anyway, thank you everyone. Yes, thank you all for participating. Oh, happy Gopashtami to everybody. That's the that's the more significant day. Happy Gopashtami. Is Sudevi Priya still on? Yes, Prabhu. Anyway, a uh, very good class. I really enjoyed it. Oh, thank you, Prabhu. Thank you for giving me that chance. You know. Well, uh, Krishna made arrangements, so we had to go. Anyway, we were looking at some farm property yesterday, but then it was canceled, and we had to go today, so I had to change.